It's a great area to work in. It's really science that makes a difference in people's lives. And it's work many people have given much of their lives to. Dr Bob Hensel initially, then David Jordan, and this man, Andrew Borrell. A total of 30 years of research so far. Every nation in the world is trying to work out how they allocate their water resources between agriculture, industry and urban sectors. And there is no way that countries will continue to allocate the same proportion to water over the next 40 years because of the burgeoning demand from the urban and the industrial sectors. The challenge to produce more food using less water is a tough one, but Andrew's team is on the trail of one solution, unlocking the genetic secrets of stay green, the mechanism allowing sorghum plants to remain alive during severe drought. Sorghum is a, a crop that evolved in Africa, and because of that it's a repository of drought adaptation mechanisms. It's got C4 photosynthesis, it's got an amazing uh, capacity and resilience under hot and dry conditions. And other crops such as rice in particular uh, do not have that, and, and wheat to varying degrees as well. So there's a capacity to understand what the drought adaptation mechanisms are in sorghum, and then you use that insight to go and try and improve the drought adaptation in, in wheat and rice and maize and barley. Stay green means just that. The plant retains green leaves for longer during grain fill and even under moisture stress. How it does that and how to transfer that ability to other plants is what Andrew's team is trying to discover. Well, we started with uh, the breeding program and did some of the physiological research. That allows us to understand the mechanisms and then when you understand the mechanisms, you want to go to the next stage and try and understand the genes which control those mechanisms and that's where we're currently at. The key to stay green has been narrowed to about three candidate genes in each of four chromosomal regions and over the next 18 months Andrew's team in collaboration with colleagues at Texas A&M University in America will begin to pinpoint the specific gene or gene networks for the trait which should fast track the transfer of stay green properties to other crop species. It's all pretty high tech, but what does it mean in the field? Well, sorghum growers are already reaping the benefits of new, high-performing stay green varieties with improved yields, larger grain sizes and increased standability or lodging resistance. It enables the plant to resist diseases like uh, charcoal rot and fusarium. So while there is a, a living tissue within the stalk and in the plant, that enables the plant to, to resist um, lodging and lodging is an extremely important um, trait to the sorghum grower because um, without uh, the, the hybrid can yield as much as it uh, possibly can but if it falls on the ground and you can't pick it up with the harvester it's, it's of no use. Well, I think growers are really looking, they're looking for factors that will give them reliable yield. They'd like to get the top yield every year but they want a good yield reliably that they can, they can bank on year in year out and can market accordingly and I think all of these factors such as stay green that will enhance standability, give them that bit of confidence that the crop's going to be there for them to harvest, that's important. With increased drought tolerance, stay green varieties have some definite advantages, but growers may need to modify their management practices, particularly at harvest, to get the best from these lines. Sorghum uh, traditionally for the, probably the last 15 years um, is sprayed out with glyphosate to kill the crop. Um, the stay green uh, trait can tend to take the plant a little bit longer to die because the, the genetics of, of the stay green wants to keep the plant alive. For Ivan Calvert, the extra 10 days wait before spraying and the 5 to 10 day delay before harvest are a fair trade-off. The beauty of stay green is that that crop will stand in the paddock. Stay green increases the standability, so uh, whereas uh, with, a, with a senescent type hybrid you could have a shower rain, you know, 10 days after spraying out, you can't get on the field and because the plant's very dead, it falls over and then again that harvestable yield is compromised. Stay green may not be the silver bullet for sorghum growers, but it's a very useful tool to spread risk, particularly in drier areas and during drought years. The focus of this GRDC investment is Australian sorghum growers. However, this work may have wider global implications that means it helps drought-proof crops in sub-Saharan Africa and India where sorghum is the staple food for 300 million people. Stay Green's been quite a good example of where 
Uh, a lot of that early work has been done by the guys down at the Hermitage, for example, and then taken up by the breeders with Pioneer Seeds, Pacific Seeds, HSR, and, and we're seeing it across all varieties out in the paddock. And if crops are able to withstand some of this moisture stress and be able to fill grain properly, uh, both in terms of quantity and in quality, right through the end of the crop's life, that's going to be good. I think the research is very important for Australian grain growers and it's very important globally. It's important because of the issues of a rising population, the issues of declining water resources and the fact that we will have to produce more food with less water over the next 40 years. It's exciting because it's using cutting edge science and I think it's really the linking of science to the promoting of human welfare which makes it a particularly enjoyable area to work in.